Taylor Swift representing America there with the national anthem at a ball game. She also made some waves at a football game this weekend. And she's also the inspiration for a new law Congress is pushing today. Now, the timing may be coincidental, but Taylor Swift is in the news and making news. Today's congressional hearing is for a bill literally named after her to combat price gimmicks and the meltdowns at Ticketmaster over concerts by Swift and Bruce Springsteen, among others. The bill named after them, and while the hearing was pretty dry, here is what lawmakers were saying today about this clash between alleged corporate monopolies and passionate fans and whether the government will try to enforce fairness. The demands placed by the megastars' legions of fans, as well as armies of ticket brokers, overwhelmed Ticketmaster systems. While the Taylor Swift meltdown may have been an anomaly, it exposed the ugly underbelly of a live event industry. Junk fees are just out of control. You don't just have to have been uh, interested in buying Taylor Swift tickets. Or the Boss and Swift Act of 2023 is the single most pro-fan and pro-competition ticketing legislation. There you have it. Many lawmakers are trying to cast themselves, as the witness said there, as pro-fan in passing laws that might protect fans against these big corporate interests. And Swifties are some of the most passionate and powerful fans out there, from music and culture to internet life to even sometimes politics, where Swift has been advocating positions for women's rights and against Donald Trump. As for concerts, Swift's current tour is like an international movement or a startup company unto itself, literally. Demand overwhelming Ticketmaster and stadiums, an estimated $5 billion Swifty impact on the economy, and she's got her own movie from the tour coming. We're talking about numbers that outstrip the production of some entire nations. And that actually makes sense when you realize Swift has built a fan base in the many hundreds of millions. That's larger than the populations of many countries. And this movement or group of fans is united around very specific things. Of course, Swift's artistry and talent, but also a bundle of issues that she has come to represent as she has evolved her power and reach over time. And while we're not going to encapsulate all of it here on this newscast, some of those issues include authentic emotional passion, outspoken feminism, a fierce rejection of the boxes and limits that society tries to put on artists and specifically on many women, and a willingness to clash with both stereotypes and these corporate systems. In fact, today's congressional scrutiny of Ticketmaster comes amidst Taylor's larger battles with streaming companies, treatments of artists. She famously and pretty politely took on Apple and won, or her infamous clash with investors who bought up her music, Swift arguing against the capitalist precedents, even if they were technically legal, because sometimes what's legal is still unfair. She even, of course, famously re-recorded her tracks to try to empower fans to basically vote, make their own choice about which legal systems they wanted to be a part of. Swift releasing six new and re-recorded albums since 2020 alone. Now, today's hearing, like this weekend's NFL game, marks a Taylor moment. But if you've been paying attention, there have been so many Taylor moments, they might be building into hours or days or years of this Taylor influence. And while politics isn't certainly the focus or starting point, Taylor Swift's civic outreach to her over 250 million followers online has tangibly spiked voter registration, including among young people. And she's driving new headlines with her unexpected appearance at this NFL game this weekend. You probably heard about that, cheering on Kansas City Chiefs' Travis Kelsey. Now, some of those moments went viral. There is just one video of them that has over 16 million views, and some would argue it's not even the most fascinating piece of tape. But it represents, as I mentioned, something larger. The attention's crossed over, the New Yorker analyzing what it all means, sales of his jersey spiking, even TV ratings, which are already pretty high for the games, went up, including among women viewers. Now, you might say, okay, Ari, that's all really interesting, and it sounds like everybody agrees. Almost. Amidst this interest, which is overwhelmingly positive, and as I showed you, much of it is about larger themes of people standing up for things they share positively and believe in, and a powerful female voice, well, it turns out that also scares certain people. Some people on the right who see this power, they see this movement, they see its civic reach, they see that she went for Biden, and they now are trying to nitpick and find anything somehow wrong with an otherwise positive moment 
of American football unity. She's been on uh, social media a lot, and now you're thinking, okay, so we all have to register to vote. We're all suddenly Democrats. At one point, she yells the F-bomb. I don't know if I could do that in front of my husband's mom. I don't really care. One She's going to dump him anyway. This is going to be a bad thing for the chief. The question is, what will break his heart first? His new relationship with Taylor Swift or the COVID shot? I think the commissioner set this up. <laughs> this is what it looks like when you are really afraid of someone, but you have a platform and you have to come up with made up misrepresentations to try to turn everything upside down. What you just saw was a bunch of the way the freak out and the meltdown went down on Fox News and other right wing broadcasts against what? Southern music, pop music, football, people enjoying football. What is the beef? The beef is the fear of this power. On a station that talks so much about how they think they represent the only real America, when in fact they look very, very out of touch right now with everything I just showed you, with an obvious political agenda where because Taylor is about empowering people and getting people registered, they need to attack her no matter what. They are out of step with where everyone else in real mainstream culture is. Take a look. How about more of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey? Can't get enough. Can't get enough. I'm she glad puts you on the best time. an epic, epic, w epic Did you show. dance? You see her, and then you can see why. It is a production yeah, like no is. other. Does it feel like Swift Mania is never ending? Yes, and it shouldn't end ever. <laughs> Taylor Mania may not end, and it may provide inspiration, cultural, civic, and otherwise, to a lot of people. And best as we can tell, Ms. Swift and the people around her, when it comes to the right-wing haters, I think she already forgot that they existed. We want to welcome Aaron Gloria Ryan, who hosts the Hysteria podcast on Crooked Media. Uh, welcome back. Aaron, your thoughts on, on all of this? Well, Ari, it sounds like you're quite a Swifty yourself, based on that... That winds up sounds very swifty. And uh, have you been to an Eras tour show yet? I have not been to an Eras tour show. I will. I will be honest. I I am going to go to the film, which I feel like is a affordable way to tap in. I listen to Taylor Swift, sure. um, but also we're objective journalists here on the beat, Aaron. <laughs> of course. Well, here's something that I think is super interesting about the right wing backlash to Taylor Swift. There's there's a couple things going on here. First of all, nobody is scarier to Republicans or right-wingers in the American political system than young women, then Taylor Swift's demographic is the scariest demographic to them because if they are motivated to vote and if they care about the same things that Taylor cares about, like you mentioned, uh, that's not very good for them. That's, that's not very good for them at all. Second of all, I think that part of the freakout is occurring for the same reason that we saw the same people freaking out about the Barbie movie just a couple months ago, and that's to chase clout. Taylor Swift is the biggest celebrity in the country right now, if not the world. I think more people would freak out about Taylor Swift showing up somewhere than pretty much anybody else, including former President Obama. Um, she's a huge celebrity. She means a lot to a lot of people day to day. She's meant a lot to a lot of people for a long time. And, you know, to try to engage or get in a fight with Taylor is a way for somebody that's less popular to get some attention on themselves. Yeah. And Fox News, I'm gotta, I gotta say, less popular than Taylor Swift right now. Uh, I think that's all fair. And you touched on the feminism uh, and the double standards that exist around that conversation, Barbie, Taylor, and, and other spaces. Um, what does it mean to have a woman like this who is for, she excites a lot of people, period, um, but also explicitly a feminist who is about empowering women, young women, and I mentioned the capitalist component. You have a lot of phony populists who are actually on the side of these big companies. Taylor makes a lot of money, but she didn't have to, to step up as she has in Congress looking at this today as a way of saying, wait a minute, uh, people and young people in this economy have to have some uh, protection ag against that kind of avarice, which also, as best I can observe, uh, is something a lot of people agree with her on. Yeah, I mean, Taylor Swift could just take her billion dollars plus or however much she's going to make from her record breaking tour and just go live in a castle and not do anything to help anybody. But she's choosing to use her power and her clout. She's got 272 million followers on Instagram and she's choosing to use her power and her clout and how much people passionately care about her. She's choosing not to do she's using that to do good. And I think that that's a that's a good reflection on her. Now, 
I could, I, I would prefer if she flew private a little bit less, just, mm. just as a, as a political progressive, but you know, she's doing more than she needs to do. And I think people see that and appreciate it because her relationship with her fans is very parasocial. Um, she talks directly to them. She writes songs directly about experiences that feel universal, even though she is like, you know, a massive star, massive celebrity. She's able to write about things in a way that feels universal. And so her fans see her giving back to regular people. And I think that's just part of the way that she communicates with them. Yeah.